Welcome to anyone who is joining us today. My name is Nancy Winterhalter. This class is tailored especially for people with movement disorders, including Parkinson's, and their friends. <laughs> so thank you for DCTV for recording this, and for the Dartmouth Council on Aging for hosting um, our Parkinson's program for, I think it's almost three years now, which is wonderful. Um, thank you to the students who show up there every week. I miss you and I look forward to the, st the time that we'll spend together. As with any movement practice, please check with your doctor if you have any health issues, such as abnormal blood pressure, um, a back injury, or any other serious concerns or chronic medical condition. Today's practice, of course, is not intended to replace personal instruction or professional guidance. Spend a moment to gather your props around you. That can include a block or a strap, um, a firm chair, invite your pet. <laughs> I encourage you to modify pro, pro, um, poses, opting in or out of any of the practice based on what you need today. Your yoga practice or any mindful practice should never cause you pain. Okay, before we begin, I'd like to introduce my friend and fellow yogi, Ann Silva. Though Anne doesn't have Parkinson's or any other condition like that, she was kind enough to join me today to practice and may demonstrate some alternate versions of poses. So get ready and let's begin. I invite you to scooch out a little bit towards the front edge of your chair. Place your feet on the earth about hips distance apart and your knees are headed forward. I invite you to push your feet into the earth for rooting and send your roots deep. Draw your attention to the long bones of the legs, the lower legs, and then to the thighs, letting the thighs rest completely on the chair. Push your seat gently into the chair as you activate the lower abdomen. Raise the rib cage just subtly away from the hips to find that length in your spine where the vertebrae stack one on the other and you give that space for the organs within to work optimally. Invite the crown of the head to rise and while the neck grows long, let the shoulders drop low. And you're sitting nobly. And then begin to take notice of your breath as it enters and exits through the nostrils. I can't help myself from closing my eyes here, so I invite you to explore doing the same at home. Knowing that each inhale nourishes you with fresh oxygen to every cell of the body, and each exhale cleanses you of the byproducts of respiration. How magical is that? And notice the gentle sh change in the shape of your body with each of your breaths. Maybe you notice that your abdomen rises or falls, chest rises on the inhale and descends on the exhale. And maybe you invite just a, just a subtle lengthening of the exhale. Don't work too hard at it. Once you get into that breath where the exhale is just slightly longer than the inhale, you may experience an even deeper sense of relaxation because that can calm the nervous system. And then let's return to our natural breath. And then soften your body a little bit about, about your skeleton. Good. Let's turn our head to the right and then invite the chin towards the shoulder. And you have a gentle opening on the left side of the neck, maybe out to the shoulder, but don't push or shove. Inhale, raise the head up and turn back to the center. 
Lengthen through the spine, let the neck grow long. And then let's turn and gaze over the left shoulder. And dip the chin to the shoulder. Soften the shoulders down. They, they like to be a little tricky. They like to creep up. Soften them down. Let your breath soften you into this shape. And on your next inhale, raise the chin and come to center. Okay. Lengthen the spine, and then once again, turn and look over your right shoulder. And this time, walk the left fingertips away. There you go. And notice any different experience here. Maybe they tippy toe back a little bit. Notice the breath. And then bring the hand back to the leg and turn the head to center. Lengthen through the spine. Remember, the neck is just an extension of the spine. So by cry raising the crown of your head, stacking your bones, you get a nice long neck. Turn and look over your left shoulder. The gaze is level. And the right fingertips may walk away to the side or even back a little bit. You may feel a gentle opening across the front of the body, and that's wonderful for your posture. And when you're ready, turn the gaze forward and bring the arm back to center. Notice how you feel just for a moment. Wonderful. Then let's dip the right ear towards the right shoulder without pushing. And then bring the left hand alongside of you or behind you. Drop that shoulder down. And once again, you might feel a gentle opening on the left side of the neck and an opening in the left chest wall, which, which is really a welcome experience. When you're ready, release the hand and bring the head back to center. Lengthen through the spine, dip the left ear to the left shoulder, and the right hand goes alongside or behind you. And I say it's a welcome experience because we tend to close off through the front of the body with our daily activities, changing our posture, changing our, just the way our body works. So this is a good invitation to open up. And we'll do more of this through that practice. When you're ready, raise the head and bring the arm back to the knee. Good. Sitting tall through the spine, push your feet into the earth. Inhale, lift the chin, drop the shoulders. And bring the sternum forward slightly. Take a full breath in, fill this space. On the exhale, tuck the chin towards the throat and maybe a gentle round in the spine. On the inhale, lift the chin, let the sternum move forward, heart shining, and gaze might lift to possibilities in front of us. Exhale. Tuck the chin to the throat gently, round the spine. And now we're gonna grow this movement as is comfortable for you. Inhale, maybe your hands slide back. The chest expands, the gaze lifts. Exhale, let the hands come forward. Tuck chin to chest and round the spine. And we're gonna move through this cat and cow. Inhale and shine. Exhale and gather. Three more times, paying special attention to how you feel during these motions. As you start to awaken the spine, start to broaden across the chest, and feeling that flow of motion. Last one. And then let's meet in a neutral spine. Let's draw the shoulders up to the ears and then let them go. Really drop them down alongside of you like they're heavy. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. That's what tension feels like. Exhale down. That's what happens when we release it. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. And come to stillness. And then let's start with some gentle circles. Let's raise up. The right shoulder, bring it back, bring it down, and bring it forward. Inhale it up and back. Exhale it down and forward. Feel the wing bone moving behind you, and then invite your whole arm in. 
Now some of us might have sensitive shoulders, so you don't have to get that big, but if you want to grow it, go ahead. All right. Watch your hand even, and that'll invite the trunk in. But remember to always be working through a long spine. Last one, good. All right. So I say a long spine because often we're like this, and if you work through that spine, you'll say, oh, that little Italian woman, she left me with some discomfort. Walk through, a, <laughs> work through a tall spine. There you go. And let's bring the left shoulder up and back, down and forward. Inhale, up and back, down and forward. And you might notice the rest of the arm comes along for the ride and it moves in these gentle spirals. That's the way we're built. And maybe you watch your hand. See if these motions can be smooth and even flowing. Come to stillness. Now we're gonna, when you're ready, we're gonna alternate. One arm back, and start to encourage the trunk to rotate. When you have a condition like Parkinson's and many other movement disorders, you lose the rotation in your body, in your trunk especially. Well, maybe you don't lose it, but it certainly diminishes it. And anybody who has one of these conditions knows what I'm talking about. And those rotations are so important to have beautiful fluid motion. And uh, they keep us safe, they keep us functioning. So let's work on them all throughout this practice. And then come to stillness, good. And sit nice and tall, notice how you feel. Good. Let's inhale, turn the palms forward and sweep the arms up as you're able. Some people can go way up and connect the hands. Some people go, I call these I dream of genie hands. And some people can keep their hands right on their shoulders. So choose what's right for you. All right. Exhale, float the arms down. Inhale, turn the palms forward. Find the length on both sides of your body as you raise your arms up. Exhale, turn your palms away and float them down. Now what happens if you push your feet into the earth, push your seat into the chair, and then inhale and lift? Doesn't that feel good, Ann? Yes, it does. Exhale down. I'll pay her later. <laughs> Inhale, float up. There you go. Exhale. This time, bring your hands to your heart. Good. Press palm to palm, and I invite you to lift your heart right up to your thumbs. Sitting tall. Notice how you feel before we continue. Maybe you notice your breath or the level of your energy. And when you're ready, inhale and open the arms to cactus arms or W, depends on you and your shoulders, okay? Exhale, gather together, press palm to palm, elbow to elbow. Inhale, open this time with arms wide. Exhale and bring palm to palm, elbow to elbow. Open with arms wide. Expand through the chest. Wing bones are coming close. Exhale and gather. So this one's particularly good for your posture. Inhale, open wide. Finding that length and breath. And exhale, gather. Inhale, open wide. Good. And this time, on your exhale, bring your left hand over to your right. So you have gentle rotation. Then pull back that arm like you're drawing back an arrow. Exhale, return the left hand to the right. Inhale and open. Good. Exhale, bring the right arm over to the left. Notice the gentle rotation in your spine. Inhale, pull back your arrow like the archer. Exhale, bring the left hand to the right. Inhale and open. So we're inviting some gentle rotation as you exhale, left hand to right, inhale. Broaden and strengthen, exhale. Inhale and open, beautiful. Last one, exhale, inhale, draw back your arrow. Set your gaze fiercely, exhale and inhale, great. Fully exhale. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good. And let's pause here for a moment. 
That might not look like much, but you can usually feel that in your upper body after that. So you might notice that we're gonna work a lot on expanding through the chest and lengthening through the spine. Sometimes rotary movements become more difficult, so we're gonna include them in this practice today with a great focus. So bring your hands down to your knees. And then let's bring the right hand over the left. Okay. Inhale, float the right arm up. Look at your thumb if it's available. Exhale, bring it down to the outside of your left knee and watch your hand. Inhale, open up in this lovely diagonal. Exhale, and cross. Inhale, moving the full length of the breath. Gaze lifts to the high hand. Exhale and down good and then let's return that right hand to the right knee pause for a moment and notice how you feel everything that you do in the chair is going to also strengthen your body for when you're standing okay. let's bring left hand over right inhale lift the arm up gaze at the hand if it's available Exhale and down. And I say that if it's available, what the heck does that mean? Inhale and up. That means if it's comfortable. Okay, sometimes you have a problem with your neck and it's hard to gaze up like that. So then maybe you just gaze at the level. But if you can and it's comfortable and available, gaze up. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. And bring the left hand to the left knee. Right, now we're going to combine those two motions. Let's cross the hands to opposite knees. Anytime you cross the midline of your body, your brain is like, yay, it likes it. <laughs> Inhale, separate the arms and lift your gaze. Exhale, cross over to opposite knees, hinge at the hips and slide forward, just a bit. Okay. Inhale, push your feet into the earth as you strengthen the spine, separate the hands. Exhale, hands down, slide them down a bit. Good. And let's repeat that maybe three times. Inhale and rise. Hinging at the hips, strong and long spine. Good. And two more, inhale and rise. Now I say one more, two more, three more. You do what feels comfortable with you, <laughs> right? Good, so if you feel like, ah, oh, you know, that one's not for me. Sit it out. Substitute it. I can't see you. And bring the hands to the heart. There you go. Great. Let's slide the hands down alongside of us. Let's bring the right arm forward and the left arm back. Okay, soften your elbows. And then we're going to switch. Okay, watch the back hand if it's available to you. <laughs> and switch. There we go. Soften the shoulders as you move. All right, and then bring this into a flowing. So this is like when you're walking, you turn the body a little from side to side. That's natural, we're not even aware of it. But sometimes when you have a certain condition, you lose that beautiful rotation and that can compromise your gait and your balance. So let's build it here. Following your breath. And then let's come to stillness, rest the hands on the knees. Very good. Close your eyes or come to a soft gaze if you're comfortable. And for a moment or two, let's rest our awareness on the breath. Staying present for each and every inhale and exhale. Without concern of what's behind us and what's in front of us, just watching the breath. And then when you're ready, let's slide the hips forward a little bit more. Make sure you still have enough bottom on your chair to be comfortable. All right. And we're going to work on weight shifting from side to side. All right. So let's start by shifting weight onto the right hip. And you might notice the left hip raises. And then onto the left hip and the right hip raises. Maybe you start really small to explore that. Because maybe you're looking at us and you're saying, that looks easy, but it's not working in my body. Start small, because this requires the top of your body to do something different than the bottom. 
And when the nervous system is challenged, that doesn't always happen. So sometimes we have to build it. Shifting hip, uh, weight from hip to hip. And now you know where you're going. So pause for a moment in the middle, float the arms up. And then shift to the right. Keep like moving like you have two bowls of soup and you don't want to tip them, okay? See, now my son, he used to carry a bowl of soup and then he'd go, Wah. and it would slip right out. Still does it, Anne. He's 30 years old, still tips his soup. <laughs> there we go, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Slide, side to side, okay? Now, Anne, if you'll continue that for a few moments, I'm just gonna rise up to stand because I, I, I would like to show you why we do this. When you're standing and moving and maybe going out of your base of support, this is exactly what the body does to keep the base of support, the center of gravity within the base of support and prevent you from falling. Now, if the body doesn't do that, then you're shifting to one side and the body follows and that's a little setup for a fall. So you want to build those, those patterns that sometimes get lost in translation, okay? So if you do this at home, just sitting, shifting weight from side to side, that's beautiful. Rest for a moment and then we're going to add on to that. You know how we're going to add on to that, Anne? Okay. So the next thing the body does when it shifts its weight and it's losing balance, it's, it's righting itself, but that's not enough. It starts to turn in the opposite direction. That's what the body does, okay? So I invite you to try this at home. Shift to the right, all right? And then look to the left, all right? And then come back to center. Let's do that again. Shift to the right and look to the left, okay? Now let's shift to the left and look to the right and come back to center. Shift to the left, <laughs> and look to the right. Great, all right? Now we'll slide through from right, shifting right, we look left. Shifting left, we look right. Good. And let's flow through that just a couple of times, sensing what that feels like in your body. You could be saying, this feels weird. <laughs> or you can set, set, be saying, possibly, this feels familiar. Okay, I hope it feels familiar. Does it feel familiar to you? Yes. Right? Given the times that I've almost <laughs> fallen. Okay. All right. Good. And then come to stillness. Wonderful. So while we're at the edge of the chair, let's open up another part of our body. I'm going to invite you to bring your right hand to the front leg of the uh, chair. All right. And bring your left palm forward. Now you're going to slide the right arm down, and the left arm's going to fly a little. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, flight the, uh, float the left arm down and fly the right arm. Good. Okay, so this opens up the side of the body. Exhale, right arm down, left arm flies. And I'm gonna invite you to try this, moving fluidly from side to side. Good. And while Anne continues, I'm just going to demonstrate a possibly a standing version of this shape. Okay. And you'll notice whether you're seated or standing with your feet parted for balance, we can do the shape, most of these shapes in either position, which is wonderful. Okay, last one. And then let's sweep both arms up. And exhale, bringing the hands to the heart. Wonderful. Pause for a moment. I'm going to take my seat. Notice how you feel. Notice your breath. Is it smooth? Is it even? Is it continuous? Mostly silent. And then open your eyes if you've closed them. And let's start to do this gentle rotation of the body over the pelvis. You can go in any direction you want and explore that space. If you find like a sticky space, hmm, explore it a little bit. All right. Of course, 
any discomfort, back away. But don't be afraid to explore a little bit. And then rotating in the other direction. There's a lot to be said for doing movements which, want, which move one part of the body while the other part is stable. So that we're not moving rigidly, like a nutcracker, for instance, you know? Am I the only one that gets the nutcracker thing, Anne? Do you get the nutcracker thing? Okay, thank you. <laughs> and come to stillness. Wonderful. All right. Plant the feet on the floor. Inhale, sweep the arms high. Exhale, and capture your left knee. Bring it up close to your left armpit. Now, if you have discomfort or you've had hip replacement, you know your restrictions, so follow them, okay? Good, and then while we're here, just let's pump the left ankle up and down. Make sure your right foot is flat on the earth so that you're well supported, and that your spine is long and strong and not soft and saggy, soggy. okay? There you go. And then on your next exhale, bring the limb down. Inhale, sweep the arms high. Exhale and capture your right knee and invite it up towards the right armpit. Standing nice and tall, push into your left foot and then maybe start to pump and point your right ankle. So this has so many wonderful um, benefits. And you're like, tell me all about them. Okay. <laughs> and bring it down. For one thing, um, you need to have mobile ankles and feet for balance, okay? For another thing, it brings fluid back up to the heart. Because sometimes we get swelling in the feet and it's the muscles that pump the fluid back, okay? Because the lymph system doesn't have a pump of its own. It relies on our position and the, lymph and the um, pumping of muscles. Isn't that interesting? Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, let's invite the left knee back up. All right, and then maybe you put your right hand on your right thigh. Inhale and open the left leg out to the side. Exhale and close. Stay there or inhale, open both the arm and the leg. Exhale and gather, okay? Inhale and open. So you're beginning to work the abdominal muscles as well. Really your entire core. Inhale, open while you're making your hip joint all nice and juicy with synovial fluid moving around. Inhale, exhale, and then release it down. Good. Now just pause for one moment there at home with me and notice how different your hip feels on the left or even your whole leg than on your right. We don't always pay attention to the sensations in our own body, except for when they pain us. But this practice is an opportunity to connect with your body in a moment by moment way. All right. When you're ready, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, capture your right, right knee, invite it up. Let's bring the left hand to the left thigh, lengthen the spine, inhale, open the right, exhale, gather. Continue just like that, or maybe the arm goes too, and you expand through the chest. The inhale opens you, the exhale gathers you. Inhale, open, exhale, gather. One more, inhale, open, exhale, gather. Great, and then bring that right leg down. Good, okay. Now I want you to, inch by inch, let's bring ourselves back to the chair, okay? So you might be you know, inclined to just push yourself back and forth, but we're gonna build this disassociation or the ability of the upper body to move in one direction while the lower body moves in another direction, okay? So rest your hands uh, on the chair if you need it or on your thighs, and let's inch by inch come forward, okay? There we go, good. And then once you get to the front, inch by inch, come back. So we'll do that a few times, or maybe just one more time. Forward, good, and then back. Good, 
Now, now that we're back, let's stay back there. Rest your trunk against the chair. Okay. Let's inhale the left leg up. And maybe the right arm comes up with it. Okay. Exhale them down. Inhale the right leg up and the left arm. Okay. And down. Now, lean away from the chair a little bit. And let's try that. Left arm up, right arm. Exhale down. Okay. And then the reverse. Now we're going to move smoothly between these two shapes. And I invite you to set your gaze steady. Spine is long. And notice what you're feeling. Okay. Notice if there's any activity in your torso as it stabilizes your torso. And then maybe you bring a little bit more rotation in by looking at the back arm. So now you have this coordination, this, this wonderful coordination. A few more times, and then I, I'm going to demonstrate something to you. Why this is important. Simple, but important. Last time, if you want. And relax it. Take a nice breath. Now, when you walk, of course you walk with your opposite arm and leg. We don't think about it, but we just do it. Whoops. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. OK? So if that didn't happen, then we'd walk kind of like this. <laughs> and that wouldn't be very good. OK? So is this OK? You are walking with opposite arm and leg. And that encourages that um, type of gait, which isn't a normal gait that sometimes we lose. Okay. And I'll tell you how we lose it is because Sometimes when you start to forward, like bend like this, which happens in these kinds of conditions, then things don't coordinate the same. And you lose that rotation, you lose the length of the stride, and the alternate pattern of motion. So doing all these exercises and motion seated with great attention will build those, those building blocks of your functional um, gait and balance, OK? All right, so let's inch out to the edge again okay. and extend the left leg long and plant the heel on the earth. Right. Now try not to lock your knee. Sit tall through the spine. And on your next exhale, hinge from the hips forward as your toes are rising. Maybe you only go this far forward and you're already feeling it behind your left leg. That's very possible. So don't strive. We're going to just gently open the left hamstring because that will influence the ease in our spine and the movement in our pelvis. Take maybe two breaths here, softening into this shape. And then when you're ready, on an inhale, partner with your hands, extend the spine, up you come. Bend the left knee back. Bring the right leg forward. Sit tall through the spine. Turn a little bit to face your extended leg, toes rising. And on your exhale, hinge forward at the hips, heart high. And then bring your hands forward. OK, and then maybe look and admire your toes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And don't let me forget to work the toes today. OK. All right? I know, they're so important. I like my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Inhale, and up we come. They're a little pudgy, but I like them. And bring it back. They do their work. Good, OK? Now let's bring the left knee up towards the chest, and then push out through the heel. So we're going to flex at the hip, bring it up, and push with the hands and the heel. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Set your gaze level. Inhale and exhale. Let's go. Inhale and exhale. Often in this class, when we actually do it on Wednesdays, we do a lot of breathing exercises. We do a little singing, a little chanting. Um, but now we're not going to do that during this time. But you can do it at home and relax it. So singing is a great thing to do, especially if you're if you find your voice doesn't project um, as well as it could. Okay. 
So let me, before we continue, I'm going to remind you that when you do your singing at home, sit tall so that you can use your breath to support your um, projection of your voice. Okay? Let's bring the right leg up and push out through the heel. In we come and out. In we come and out. Take your time, matching your movement to your breath, pushing through your hands so your energy is moving through your body. Two more, maybe. One, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. And relax. Great. Okay. Now let's move down to the feet a little bit. And I'm going to do your favorite one. Okay. First, let's just look at our feet and raise just the toes off the mat, off the earth. And then bring them down to touch. Now bring them up. And this time, when you bring them out, down, try to bring them down from the pinky toe to the thumb. And you might be like, that's not happening. Up, oh, just try it, okay? Because we do have all the little muscles necessary to do that. We just forgot how to do it. Up, oh. and down, there you go. You keep doing that, Anne, and I'm gonna just demonstrate why we do this. We do this for many reasons, but one of them is when you're standing and you lose your balance backwards, the first thing that happens is your toes rise, okay? If your toes don't have the mobility or the inclination to rise, then um, you don't have your first line of defense against falling. So well, as I shift backwards, look what happens. I don't make that happen, that's just the body does that. All right, good, and then rest. Now we're gonna work the other direction. I'm gonna invite you to curl the toes and then slide the heel up, and this is the one you like, and the inchworm. Curl the toes and slide the heel up. And once you've looked down and you know where it's going, look up, sit tall and do it on its own. So this one, this little inchworm, is very important. Because um, as you age and your foot flattens, okay, all the, the arch loses support of the muscles and the, then the bones literally change. They start to the foot falls in, the knee falls in, the hip flexes. Um, that's not a healthy way of being. So besides doing these exercises to, to work the muscles to maintain that arch, you should always be in proper footwear. And sometimes you need to go to somebody to tell them what's right for your unique foot. Okay, last one, and switch over to the other side. Okay, so I could even do that in standing if I want. In the morning, if I'm standing at my counter, I can do my inchworm. Good, and relax it, okay? And now we're gonna work on the uh, muscles that support the foot and the ankle, all right? And so they're hip width apart, and we're gazing down, and we're lifting the arch, and then we're lowering the arch and lifting the side of the foot. Okay. That's very hard. Lift the arch, and that's natural because our foot only has a little motion in that direction. So that's natural. Don't be like, oh, what's the matter with my feet? That's totally natural, Anne, okay? Good, thank you for bringing that up. Up, and out. Now if you notice, I have my hands on my knees and my hips are steady. Because there's a tendency, if you don't have motion in the feet, there's a tendency to do this and this, right? And that's not what you're looking for. You're trying to strengthen, in this one, the ankle and the feet. Okay, there we go. And relax it. Now, let's explore our, our lower limbs a little bit more. So bring your hands in to the, um, below your knee, but on the outside a little bit, okay? And then raise the toes up, and then bring them down. Okay, raise the toes up, and bring them down. And what do you feel? The muscle. Yeah, so you feel, as you're lifting your toes and your, the balls of your feet, you feel the muscles right here, active, okay? So once you feel that with your hands, then work yourself back up and just feel it from the inside, okay? Oh, those are big. Well, they're flattish kind of muscles, but they're very strong when they're working properly. And I'll tell you why. Who cares? I care, I'll tell you why. <laughs> you care. Okay, continue in. So also, 
while you're going backwards, the muscles grip around the front here and the back here to keep you from falling. So it's really important to keep those muscles strong. All right, there you go. All right, come to stillness and then place your hands on the back, the big calf muscles, okay? And raise your toes up. Oh, there, they popped right into my hands, yours? Now you're raising your, I'm sorry, raise your heels up, Ann. That's what I meant. Um, so I have, um, my maiden name is Bian Cooley. So I have Bian Cooley calves, they're very strong. <laughs> and ample. <laughs> so I can feel them pop right into my hands with my Bian Cooley calves. <laughs> Isn't that a funny name? And up, and down, Bian Cooley. And up, and down, there you go, good. And down, and relax it. Good. So you might, if you're um, home and standing in the morning behind your counter, all right, you might work on these exercises, these motions mindfully by rising up the heels off the earth and down. If you don't like, feel comfortable in standing, you can do them in sitting, rising up on toes and down. Good. You can lift an arm if you want up and down. But use the support of the chair or the counter to keep you honest and steady. I don't know. I've been moving for years and years and years in my work and it still is delightful to me to move in simple ways. And simple ways can help you get stronger. It doesn't have to be like all craziness and complicated. It can be simple, okay? Come to stillness when you're ready. And on an exhale, maybe you bend, you hinge forward and you set your seat back. Good. Inhale, push into your feet to rise. Exhale, send your seat back. And this would be considered chair pose in your yoga practice. Inhale and rise, and you can do it, as you can see, in your chair or standing. You can keep one or two hands on a surface for safety. There you go. Okay. It's very wonderful to notice how you feel in your heart and to share compassion with yourself as well as with others. And sometimes it can be hard to be compassionate and patient with yourself when your body doesn't always cooperate. but. Um, Try to be as compassionate and patient with yourself as you possibly can. So I'm going to part my legs a little bit and we're gonna revisit something that we did earlier. So let's bring the right hand to the left. Okay. Inhale and lift your right hand. Maybe if you're standing, you shift your weight. Even if you're sitting, you shift your weight a little bit to the right. Exhale, bring it down and across. Inhale, bring it up and away. Find the length in your body. Exhale, down and across. Find the rotation in your body. Inhale, up and away. Exhale, down and across. And then bring the right hand to the right leg or the right side of the chair. Left hand to the right hand. Inhale, up and away. Look at your hand. Exhale, down and across. This is an invitation to shift your weight, whether it's in your chair or standing, to expand your heart space, your chest, to strengthen your posture, and to work across the midline. So there's so many things going on here. And it feels beautiful, I think. Inhale. Huh? Even seated, feel it. Doesn't it? Good. And last one, inhale up. And exhale down. And relax it. Now, whether you're seated or standing, part your legs even a little bit wider. There we go. And you can hold on to the chair with one hand or the counter or not. Inhale and open the right arm out to the side. Okay. Reach energetically to the right wall. Stay right there, or if you're very solid, move your left hand out to the side. Spread the fingers wide. Draw the shoulder blades close behind you. Okay. And here we are in your five-pointed star. If you have sensitive shoulders, maybe your five-pointed star looks more like this, with your hands lower. Okay. If you're feeling like you want a little more power in your shape, maybe the arms come up. Push your feet into the earth for stability. 
And this position invites you to feel your power and vitality. So be mindful if you're curling in the spine, lift your heart. And if you want to do this on your own, it's wonderful to do it with a wall right behind your back. That's a great way to gain this postural extension if it's challenging. Exhale, float the arms down. Good. I'm going to heel toe my feet back together and do one more standing, if you're standing. Let's bring the hands to the right and then we're going to bring them up and over like over the moon and down to the left side of the chair or your left leg. Inhale, bring them up and over the moon. Inhale, up and over the moon. Good. Inhale, up and over the moon. Wonderful. And then bring the hands to your heart with a palm over palm, palm over palm. Soften your shoulders, push your feet into the earth, wrap the muscles around the bones of the leg. Engage your pelvic floor and lower abdomen, shine the heart, soften your shoulders, and let your crown rise up. And this is known as mountain pose in yoga, where your hands can be at your heart or alongside of you. Your gaze is level and steady. And you're noticing your breath. And just like the mountain, you're strong, you're steady, and you're resilient. These shapes, they don't, they don't gift, us the, gift us these qualities. They're within us, they are us, they're our inner essence. They just remind us that they're there and then they cultivate them within us. So that we remember who we are and we stand firm in who we are. Notice your breath. I inhale. I exhale. Wonderful. I'll join you seated, Anne. So you may have noticed in this practice that we did a lot of work on extension in the spine, building postural muscles, okay, rotation in the body, you know, the various ways we worked on it, okay, okay. getting in touch with our own body. All of those are just essential qualities that you need if you're dealing with any movement disorder such as Parkinson and Parkinson's and others. Of course, it's really great for everybody as well. So let's um, sit back for our relaxation part of the practice, which just, is just as important as every other part. Okay. And I invite you to feel your feet on the floor Feel your thighs on the chair. Invite the crown to rise gently. And close your eyes or come to a soft gaze. Begin to notice the details of your face. Soften the forehead. Soften the eyelids. Release any remaining tension in the cheeks and the jaw. Let your, loops be li your lips be loose. Your teeth part gently, top from bottom. And let all expression slide from your face. Let your neck relax. Let your shoulders soften. Notice the heaviness of your arms, the heaviness of the hands, the fingers, even the fingertips. Rest your awareness on your chest. Notice the gentle rise and fall of your chest with each natural breath. 
20,000 times a day, our body breathes us naturally. Let your hips be heavy, your thighs heavy on the chair, your feet heavy on the floor. Invite an ease to the spine and a peace to your face as you rest for just a few moments more, knowing that you are enough, just as you are. invite you to begin to deepen your breath. And then invite your breath to bring small motions back to your fingers and toes. And then I invite you to bring your hands down towards the earth with your palms shining forward. Open the heart, inhale, slowly raising the arms. Exhale, inviting hands to heart and heart to hands. And I'll offer you this small kindness meditation. May you be well. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. And may we all be filled with loving kindness. Peace. Thank you.